In this video, I am going to talk about slant asymptotes. So far, you have seen horizontal and vertical asymptotes. In the horizontal case, the function approaches the value y is equal to b. In the vertical case, is the vertical asymptote uh, typically x is equal to a, where typically function goes either to positive infinity or negative infinity. So, these are the two scenarios you have seen. However, there are cases, there are functions for which uh, the let's say the function value approaches some straight line so it could be going like this this way or it could be going like this this way so it's approaching the this line y is equal to mx plus b y is equal to mx plus b now this is one of those functions so how do you figure it out that whether it's approaching a straight line. Typically, uh, you look at the power of x. In the numerator, it will be higher power by one, okay, compared to the denominator. So in the denominator, we have x squared. In the numerator, we have x cubed. So in the long run, the function behaves linearly, meaning uh, in the form of like mx plus b, because think approximately, the function is going to be behaving like x cube over x square, which is just x, right? So that's the linear function. So if you kind of look at this function in the long run, it behaves more like a straight line or approaches a straight line. So how do I find out what that straight line is? Uh, the easiest way to do that is just take this um, rational function and do a very basic, simple, long division. And that's exactly what I will do. However, you could reorganize the terms in the numerator and kind of accomplish the same task as uh, long division, but um, just do straightforward long division. That's easier. So my divisor is x squared plus x, and my dividend is 3x cubed, 4x, plus 1. Now, x square, how many times does it go into 3x cubed? Which is, in essence, I'm asking, what is 3x cubed divided by x square? So, like the way you say, uh, 15, okay? How many times 5 goes into 15? You know it's 3, right? So, what, in essence, you're doing is dividing five, uh, 15 by 5 which gives you 3. In exactly the same way, how many times x squared goes into 3x cubed? So to find that, you divide the 3x cubed by x squared, which, you know, is 3x squared goes into x cubed x times 3x. So x squared goes into 3x cubed 3x times. So that's going to give you 3x cubed. But since this is a divisor, you have to multiply everything by the quotient, which is 3x. So it's going to be plus 3x times x is 3x squared. Now, the way you do long division, you subtract the bottom from the top. 3x cubed and 3x cubed are going to cancel. But uh, there is a square term here in the bottom, but no square corresponding square term on the top. So that's kind of like having 0 times square. Sometimes we use uh, placeholders. I just didn't do it here. So 0 times x squared is 0. So, so, so 0 times x squared minus 3x squared is going to give you negative 3x squared. So I'm going to have negative 3x squared. That I'm going to just bring this 4x down, like the way you bring the next digit down. So now how many times x squared goes into negative 3x squared, which is just negative 3, right? So it's going to be negative 3x squared. The negative 3 times x is going to give you negative 3x, right? Now again, we are going to subtract. So negative 3x squared, from that you subtract negative 3x squared, that's 0. Uh, from 4x, you subtract negative 3x. So now this is where sometimes mistakes happen. From 4x, this is not going to be 4x minus 3x, which is equal to x, no. From 4x, you are subtracting negative 3x. That's how division works. Um, so that's going to give you 4x. Negative times negative is positive 3x, which is 7x. So that's going to give me 7x. And then I bring down the 
positive 1. So the power of x is 1 here, power of x is 2 here, so it doesn't go. So there's going to be a remainder. So this is your remainder. Okay, and that's your quotient. That's your quotient. So I could rewrite the function as this f of x is equal to 3x cubed plus 4x plus 1 divided by x squared plus x, x squared plus x. And that is going to be equal to quotient, which is 3x minus 3 plus 7x plus 1 divided by x squared plus x. Now we are going to find the limit of this function, okay? And let's see what happens if we find the limit. So my limit is going to be limit x approaches infinity. So when we are trying to find the asymptote, we are trying to, in essence, find the behavior of this function as x goes towards infinity either positive or negative so let's stick to positive infinity here so what's going to happen uh, it is going to be uh, f of x so instead of f of x i'm going to write 3x minus 3 plus so let's put a square bracket here 7x plus 1 over x square plus x and that is going to be the same as limit x approaches infinity 3x minus 3 right plus the limit of limit x approaches infinity 7x plus 1 so if i divide both numerator and the denominator by x i get 7 plus 1 over x divided by x plus 1 as x goes to infinity the whole thing goes to 0 y okay it approaches zero because this is going to be zero right and the denominator is going towards infinity so seven over infinity is going to be zero so the limit of this function limit of this function in essence approaching the limit of this right which kind of tells us that the function approaches the value function approaches the value y is equal to 3x minus 3 because this limit is 0. So in essence, this function that's in question, it is not approaching a horizontal value, okay, or y is equal to b, a fixed value, okay? It is approaching a slanted or a slant line, in this case, a straight line with slope 3 and y-intercept negative 3. So this is how you find the slant um, asymptote for a function. I hope that this discussion was helpful. Thank you very much.